Hi, my name is Andy Sykes. I'm an award-winning animator and illustrator based in the UK. Welcome to my lessons on Flash CS5. This is my website, hexjibber.com. You can check out my animation, my illustration, my interactive work, and also more of my video tutorials in Flash. Enjoy. Hi, and welcome to my tutorial on using sound in Flash, or I should say, Hi, welcome to my tutorial on how to use sound in Flash. You'll see that my sound is appearing up here in my timeline. At the moment I've got one layer that has my text and the other layer that has my sound embedded in it. It's quite important to have your sound on a separate layer just for clarity's sake. And you can see that my sound is, if I unlock this layer, if I click on my sound, I get my sound options over here in the properties. And you can see that my sound is also here in my library. It's a WAV. It says welcome to sound.wav. Now I recorded this sound just with my webcam the same way that I'm recording this tutorial. I recorded it in QuickTime on my Mac but you could record with a decent microphone into SoundForge on the PC, Soundbooth or any other sound program, Audacity, Amadeus Pro, it's up to you. And then in order to get that sound into Flash if you go File, Import, you can either go import to stage or import to library. I'm going to go import to library and it'll prepare to import and then it'll bring you up an option of where to import that sound from. And you can see uh, here I've got my .fla file using sound and I've got this welcome to sound.wav that I've already imported. So if I click open it'll tell me that I already have it so I'm just going to cancel that. So now you've got your sound in the library here, you can see that I've already got mine in my timeline. But if I get rid of it, you can see I've just got a blank keyframe and no sound. So if I wanted to re-import that sound, what I do is I drag it from the library to anywhere in the stage and let go. And you can see it appears up here in my timeline. And you can see that it's 44 kilohertz stereo, 16 bit. And it's 6.1 seconds. I've got it set at the moment to stream. Now this is really important if you're doing animation. Stream is what I always use for my sound. It's really good for lip syncing and animation. And you'll notice, I'll just stop speaking for a second. As you scrub the red timeline bar through the timeline, when you've got stream selected, it will play the sound frame by frame so that you get a really good idea of how the sound plays out in your animation. Hi. A little bit more about streaming sounds. You'll notice that I've made the keyframe that I've got my sound in. You can see here I've got a blank keyframe which has all my sound in. I've made that last for the length of the sound. The sound stops here at frame 153. But if I were to shorten that using streaming, it would only play the sound up to frame 70 where I've stopped my keyframe and after this there's empty frames. If I play that through, hi welcome to my tutorial on you'll see that my sound stopped after frame 70. So that's something to bear in mind if you're using streaming sound. Now your other options, apart from stream, are event, start and stop. The main difference for streaming and uh, event sounds on the internet is if you've exported your movie to an SWF, if your sound is an event sound, it'll have to load the whole sound before it can play it. Whereas if you're using a stream, then it can play the sound as it downloads it from the internet. As for start and stop sounds, I'd ignore those unless you're using ActionScript and making interactive Flash documents. You've got an option down here of repeat or loop, so you can make your sound repeat as many times as you like, and you can also make it loop indefinitely. You can choose different effects. Um, I never tend to edit my sound actually in Flash because I don't think that the options it gives you are actually sophisticated enough. If I want to add, because uh, you can add fades, uh, you can just use the left or the right channel. If I want to do something like that, I tend to do it in a sound program before I import it into Flash 
rather than doing it in Flash as I go. But if you were making an interactive project, it's a good way of making sounds fade in and out without having to prep them first. So that's all you need to know about using sound in Flash. Have a go yourself, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Hi, if you enjoyed this lesson, why not consider checking out the Hextuber Coloring and Activity book on my website, hextuber.com. It's suitable for kids and adults alike, and you can get it from Amazon, Play.com, and WH Smiths. Cheers.